One of the big highlights of this past week has been the celebration of the new year. And I noticed this first, I think, when the millennium changed back in 2000. But all around the world, hour after hour after hour, it became January 1st as the, as the earth revolved around the sun and turned on its axis. And every nation, practically every nation in the world, celebrates the new year. 2019. It's amazing. What is 2019? What happened 2019 years ago? The birth of Jesus Christ. Our calendar that marks A.D. is based on the estimated time, the traditional time of understanding when Jesus was born. And to think of that, that all across the world, atheist nations celebrate it the birth of Jesus Christ 2019 years ago. Buddhist nations, Hindu nations, Muslim nations, atheist nations, any, no matter what their emphasis, they celebrated the birth of Jesus. And in our text this morning, in Colossians 1.18, it says, and he, meaning Jesus, is the head of the body, the church, he is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy, or as it, we'll see later, have first place. So despite the official stand of the government, they celebrate it. Do you know that the calendar that we use is the Gregorian calendar, and that is the most dominant calendar that's used in the world for businesses. Several decades ago, they, they began to use that so that there would be a unified calendar for the world. The United Eight Nations uses that. Every year, the world celebrates the birth of Jesus when they celebrate the New Year. Every business day, when they conduct their business based on the Gregorian calendar, they are celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. Jesus is above all things, and even when we don't intentionally want to glorify him and do not intentionally want to recognize him as Lord and, and the one who de deserves the glory, the world celebrates Jesus. I think that is absolutely amazing. And I've probably said that to you year after year, but it just thrills me every time I see the fireworks going up and the balls dropping and all the other stuff that goes on the, the, the confetti and the, and the New Year's horns that blow. and all, It's celebrating Jesus. What a glorious, glorious thing. And so this morning, we're going to begin a, a new series called First, and today's message is First Place. And I, the, the bottom line that I want you to get from this, if you, if you don't get anything else from what I say this morning, I, I, want to, I want you to get this. You will never get your life in order until you place Jesus in first place. You will never get your life in order until you put Jesus in first place. If you tell a child to start to count to ten, and they start with two, you would stop them and say, no, no, you don't start with two. What do you start with? You start with one. If they start with five, you'd say, no, no, you don't start with five. You start with one. If you want to get your life in order, you have to get first place in the right place first. And that is to put Jesus in first place. That verse that I quoted from the NIV in the New American Standard Version in Colossians 1.18, it says, He is also head of the body, the church, and he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will come to have first place in everything. And this speaks about priorities. And many times, we're going to have some charts up here. Uh, the, the first, the, when we look at priorities, sometimes people try to get a, a, a static list like this. They number them. I just picked some, some things that people might put on their, their list. Uh, family, work, uh, your house or your, or your possessions, uh, rest, recreation, exercise. If, if you don't have Jesus in first place, prayer and Bible reading and, and the church might be at the bottom if it's on the list at all. And, and then you say, okay, 
that's my list, this is what I live by. Some people might have work first, or they might have recreation first, or whatever. But you, they, they try, try to get a static list and say, these are my priorities, this is first, second, third. And then someone comes to Christ, or they, they, are, they hear a message like this, and they say, well, I want, to put, I, I want to put Jesus first. And so they take their list, and they put Jesus in the number one spot, and then they go on with their list, and, and maybe now church and Bible reading and prayer moves up a little higher on the list, but, uh, and, and some of the, the lists might, might change. But the problem with a static list, in other words, an unchanging list that, that you live by, is that life doesn't work that way. Have you ever found that out? You know, sometimes a plan is good in a perfect world, but we don't live in a perfect world. And so as we look at, at life, life changes year to year. You know, when you're in your 20s, your life is different than what it'll be when you're in your 60s, and when you're in your 60s, it's different than what it's going to be when you're in your 80s and 90s. It changes from season to season. Your priorities are different maybe in the summertime than what they are in the wintertime. Both times I try to stay warm, but... Uh, Anyway, but season to season, month to month, our priorities change. Matter of fact, even week to week, they change. Day to day, they change. Hour to hour, they change. You cannot have a, a static list of 1 to 10 or 1 to 8 or whatever it may be. You cannot have a list and say, every moment of every day, this is my priority list because life changes. Let's look at it, kind of looking at it on a wheel. You know, during working hours, work is probably at the top, right up there at the top. You know, it's good to be a good parent, uh, and it's good to, to uh, you know, be able to have some recreation or whatever, but if you're at work in the middle of the work day, and uh, your spouse calls and says, hey, uh, our son got home from school, and he wants to learn how to ride a bike without training wheels. Well, in the middle of the work day, you don't leave and go home, even though you're a good parent, unless you have that kind of flexible schedule, work is the priority during your working hours. But let's look at vacation. Work may drop way down the list, or maybe even off the list when you're on vacation, and family is at the top. Or maybe recreation is at the top. Or maybe rest is at the top. That changes too. Uh, Jane and I raised two sons. When our sons were in their, te well, even childhood and teens, recreation was the number one thing on vacation, family and recreation. We would start first thing in the morning, and we would run until we couldn't run anymore, collapse into bed, get up in the next morning and do it again. We went on, on a trip uh, when our son graduated from high school, uh, our oldest son, we flew to Atlanta for a real quick weekend, and it was foggy. We wanted to go up uh, to Peachtree Plaza, the 72nd floor, to a rotating restaurant, and it was cloudy and foggy. You couldn't even see the building next door, let alone a panoramic view. So we went back uh, the next day for lunch. But that's after we golfed all morning. Then we went to lunch at Peachtree Plaza on the top of the 72nd floor, and there's a story behind that that the clock won't allow me to tell you. And then in the afternoon, we went to a baseball game at Turner Field to watch the Orioles whoop up on the Atlanta Braves. I mean, it was just, we, we were a few minutes late in the first inning, and it was 4 nothing before we got to our seats. I mean, it was a great, great game. But anyway, the priorities changed. I'm saying way too much here. And then, and then family devotions, when it's time for family devotions. It might be when you first get up in the morning. It might be at mealtime. It might be before you go to bed. But there's a time where you want to gather your family and, and prayer and Bible reading. Or maybe your own personal uh, goals. But, but there's a time of the day where that becomes the priority. You don't sit at work, probably, unless you're on a break and, and read the Bible and pray openly. You're, uh, there's a time for that. Or maybe it, it, uh, you're going through a time of, of health recovery. And uh, it, it may be that exercise is the priority. If you maybe had a heart attack. Uh, or if you, you uh, have lost your strength and you have to regain your strength, it might be exercise and therapy. It might be rest. Now, years ago, 
they put a lot of emphasis on rest. If you had surgery, you laid in bed for 10 days, and then you had to try to get up and get your strength back. Today, they believe that, you know, you get out of surgery and you start exercising, and they get you out of bed right after surgery, and at least the next morning. But uh, those kinds of things. So you understand. It's just kind of picture it as a wheel. Your priorities are there, but they turn. They spin. They're different hour to hour throughout the day, or they're different uh, from week to week, depending what's going on in your life. And that is normal. Now, the question is, when you look at life as a wheel, how does Jesus become first place? Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 and 24 says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men, since you know that you have received an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. You see, that becomes the principle of everything. And now you take your priority wheel and you put Jesus first in everything that you do. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You might be during your working hours at work, but Jesus is number one in your life. You may be on vacation and you might be with your family and you might be enjoying recreation or rest, but Jesus is first in your life. You may be having family devotions. Jesus is first in your life. It may be Sunday morning, a time for church, and Jesus is first in your life. I've said this many times, and I believe it's true even today as we talk about all the changes in culture and everything. There are two kinds of people on Sunday mornings. There are people who make a commitment, I'm going to church on Sunday. And they begin preparing Saturday night. They might set an alarm. They might cancel other appointments. They might even, some people would even begin to get their clothing ready, whatever it is. But they know before they go to bed Saturday night, I'm going to church Sunday morning. And when those people are not in church, it's a surprise. And you think, I wonder what happened. Are they on vacation? Are they sick? Did they have a car accident? What's wrong? They're not here. Then there's other people who, who church is not a priority. They go to bed Saturday night and they think, well, you know, if I wake up, I'll go to church. Or, you know, if there's not a picnic or, you know, if there's not something that somebody else wants me to do, I'll go to church if I don't have anything to do if I'm awake, right? Those kind of people, you're surprised when they do show up. And you say, oh, yeah, it's good to see you this morning. I haven't seen you in six weeks. And, uh, you know, so that... Okay, so when you make church the priority, you, you prepare for that, you plan on that, and you don't miss it. Now, I, I know it's 28, no, no, it's 2019 now. It, I know it's 2019, and that might be too harsh to say, but I just said it, so you'll just have to, I told you earlier I love you, and, and I'll go along with that. But here, here's the point that I'm, that I'm making. Paul said, whatever you do, whatever you do, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Jesus is not first on a list. Jesus is first in our life. You see, putting Jesus first is more than just worshiping on the first day of the week. Putting Jesus first is more than reading your Bible and praying first thing in the morning. Do you know that you can go to church every week and not serve Jesus and not know Jesus, not follow Jesus? Do you know you could read your Bible and pray every morning and disobey Him all day long? You see, that's not enough. We need to put Jesus first in your life. Now you say, now how does that work? How, how do you do that? How do you make Jesus first in your life? How many of you are married or have been married or hope to get married, okay? <laughs> Nicholas is on the hope to get married side, okay? You're already doing this, right? I mentioned earlier that Jane and I had the privilege of being at a, at a wedding last Sunday evening. It started at 6 o'clock. I don't know when it finished. We, lived, we left after we got dinner and still got home at 11, or no, 1.30, 12.30. Yeah, it's a good thing I'm married. She helps me get the... Get this right, but a, but a beautiful, awesome wedding. I was this young lady's pastor for 16 years from the time she was five 
till she was 21. She's 31, got engaged, and said, I want Pastor Dwight to do my wedding ceremony. It was a wonderful honor to be there and do that. And when they took their vows, they took vows to honor one another and keep one another in sickness and in health and, and, and in richer for poorer, for in everything, till death do us part. You see, you're married. And you're married not just when you're with your spouse. You're married when you're at work. You're married when you go on a business trip. You're married when you're hanging out with your friends. You're married when your spouse is away or at work. There's never a time, never a place, never an event, or never a responsibility where it is appropriate for you to think of yourself or to behave yourself or present yourself as not being married. Since last Saturday evening at about 6.20, 6.25, that couple took their vows and they're married. No matter where they go, no matter what they do, whether they're together or apart, no matter what circumstance they're in, they're married until death do they part. They took the vows before God and said, this is what we covenant with God to do. That's how you make Jesus first in your life. In 1 Corinthians 10.31, again, Paul writes there, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. He wrote the same thing again. Just change the words, the order of the words as he wrote it. Jesus is first in everything in your life. You, when, when you say Jesus is Lord, it's not just when you're in church. It's not just when you're having family devotions. It's not just when you're thinking about you put Jesus first in your life and he's first in your life all the time. Jesus is first in your life, in your work or your business. It shows in your integrity. It shows in giving a good day's work for a good day's pay or Maybe not such a good pay, but you still agreed to take that pay for a good day's work. It shows up in your honesty. It shows up in the way you entreat your employees or your customers, whoever it may be. Jesus is first in your family. It shows up in how you model obedience. You can't expect your, your children to obey you or to obey God if you're not obeying God yourself. You see, putting Jesus first means I don't know everything. I'm learning. I'm growing. But what I do know, I will apply it in my life. I will obey what God wants me to do. It, it shows up in teaching God's Word to your family. It, it shows up in living in love in your home. Jesus is first when you're on vacation. You don't take vacation from Jesus. You don't pack your bags and leave Jesus at home. When Jesus is first in your life, He is first in your life on vacation. He's first in, in your life in your material possessions. You don't put anything that you own ahead of Jesus. Jesus is first. If you put Jesus first in your life, He is always first in your life. Jesus is first in how you steward your health. Becky stole my line this morning with the exercise and the rest and nutrition. How we take care of ourselves is a reflection of Jesus being first in our lives. I want to say it again in regard to Jesus in first place, just what I said about marriage. There is never a time, there is never a place, there's never an event, there's never a responsibility where it is appropriate to, of, for you to think of yourself, behave yourself, or present yourself with Jesus anywhere but first place in your life. If Jesus is first, He's always first. He's first in everything. And so, yes, we continue to do all the human things that we do. We have to go to work. We want to spend time with our family. We, we rest. We have recreation. 
All, we, we, there's all kinds of things that we do, but right at the center of our lives, in all of those events, in all of those responsibilities, in all of those places, Jesus is first. And that's what Paul is saying to us this morning when he tells us that Jesus is to be in first place. He's not to be at the top of the list. He's not to be first, first thing in the morning. He's not to be first the first day of the week. He's to be first in everything. Everything we do, we put Jesus first. And as we learn and as we grow, that changes. There are people who have been around the church for many years and were raised in the church and, and they, they understand more of God's Word and the Bible tells us we have more responsibility. We, we know more. We need, there's more for us to obey. There's more responsibility. Jesus needs to be first in everything. You may be a new believer. You may just be starting out. You may make some mistakes. You may not do everything exactly the way the Bible tells you to. That's fine. Give yourself space. But from your heart, as you learn and grow in Christ, put Jesus first, and when you learn something new, obey it. Apply it. Allow it to make a difference in your life. And I hope this helps you this morning because there are a lot of good people, well-meaning people, who are trying to put Jesus first and they put him at the top of a list. But as the day goes, he's not there anymore. No, Jesus is first in everything. And as our life priorities change even from hour to hour, Jesus is first if we want to make him first in our lives. And I trust today as believers in Jesus Christ, followers of Jesus, that as we begin a new year, not just a resolution but a transformation in our lives, we want to commit or recommit to putting Jesus first in everything we do, wherever we go, whatever we're doing, to put Jesus first. Perhaps you're here today and have never even asked Jesus to forgive your sin or made a decision to follow Jesus. I want to encourage you this morning, right here, before you leave this room, you can make a choice to become a follower of Jesus Christ. I'm going to pray a closing prayer, and as I pray this closing prayer. I'm going to pray a prayer of repentance and confession in that prayer. And if you would like to pray that prayer with me, you can pray it in your heart. You don't have to say a word out loud. Just say a prayer from your heart and ask Jesus to forgive your sin and make a choice to become a follower of Jesus. And you can leave here today as a follower of Jesus. And I want to challenge every believer, every follower of Jesus Christ, confirm today that Jesus is first in everything. And to commit yourself this year to be a growing disciple of Jesus. No matter how long you've been a Christian, don't depend on what you already know. Be learning and growing and adapting and making changes in your life based on what God's Word reveals to you. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for this wonderful opportunity to be together, the joy of this time, the fellowship with your people, to love one another, to receive Holy Communion with thanksgiving in our heart, to sing your praises, to rejoice in the work of the Lord. We thank you this morning for our new members. Lord, we just praise you today for all that you have been to us. And Lord, for those of us who know you this morning, help us to place you at first place in our lives. Yes, we live in this world. We're human beings, and we do all kinds of stuff. And we own all kinds of stuff. And we're responsible for all kinds of stuff. But in the midst of our stuff, May Jesus always be first place. And then, Lord, there may be some here today who've never made a decision to follow Jesus. I pray that they will join me in this prayer in, in their own hearts. Dear Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. I was born in sin. I have a sin nature within me. I have a tendency to sin. 
I've lived a life of, in rebellion against you. I, I may not be bad. I may be very bad. But in my heart, I have not chosen to obey you. And today I repent. I turn around. I turn from my sin. And I turn to Jesus. And I ask you to restore me into a relationship with God the Father. And right here in this place, on this first Sunday morning of 2019, I make a decision to become a follower of Jesus Christ in response to your love and your mercy and your grace that is extended to me. Lord, I pray that you would go with us now. May your blessings be upon us. May we be a people who it's evident that Jesus is first place in our lives. And Lord, may we go and share the love that only comes from Jesus as we go out into this world. And we give you praise and honor and glory for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.